Government in the field of the United States of America and Nolan. In 2006, the United States of America closed a watercraft repair centre in Hampshire where Mrs. Nolan worked and dismissed her and other employees for redundancy. She complains that the United States did not consult with any employee representative on the proposal for closure. The United States denies any duty to consult, but says that if any existed, it arose not on the proposal, but only after the decision to close the base. Mrs. Nolan relies on Part 4, Chapter 2 of the Trade Union and Labour Relations Consolidation Act 1992, TULCRA, as amended in 1995 by the Collective Redundancies and Transfer of Undertakings Protection of Employment Amendment Regulations 1995. Both these were intended to give effect to the United Kingdom's obligations under EU law, particularly Council Directive 77-187 EEC, or now 98-59 EEC. Mrs. Nolan succeeded before the Employment Tribunal and the Employment Appeal Tribunal. The Court of Appeal referred to the Court of Justice the question whether the obligation to consult arose on the proposal or only after the decision to close the base. The Court of Justice unexpectedly declined jurisdiction, holding that as the directive is an internal market measure, dismissal of staff at a public administrative establishment like the base is outside it. The Court of Appeal therefore ordered a further hearing to decide the question left undecided by the Court of Justice. The United States appeals to the Supreme Court on three grounds. First, in the light of the Court of Justice's ruling, Talcra, as amended, should be construed, like the EU directive, as not applying to employment by a public administrative uh, authority at an establishment like the base, at least uh, when the establishment is a military base uh, which uh, was closed as a result of a decision taken at the highest level in Washington. Second, the same result should be reached in the light of principles of international and or EU law. Third, in any event, the Secretary of State exceeded the powers conferred by Section 2 of the European Communities Act 1972 when making the 1995 regulations, since these went further than EU law by protecting employees of public administrative establishments. The Supreme Court dismisses the United States' appeal by a majority of four to one, and remits the case to the Court of Appeal for determination of the question whether the obligation to consult arose on the proposal or only after the decision to close the base. Lord Mance gives the leading judgment with which Lords Newberger uh, and Lady Hale and Lord Reed agree. Lord Calmworth dissents. The reasons for the majority's judgment are these. At ground one, Tulkra applies on its face to public administrative <coughs> establishments. The fact that employment at a military base might not have been foreseen by Parliament is no reason for reading into clear legislation a specific exemption which would not in fact mirror any exemption in EU law, especially when the foreign state could have invoked state immunity but did not do so in time. As to ground two, jurisdiction is primarily territorial in both international and domestic law. Talcro regulates procedures for dismissal for redundancy in England, Wales and Scotland. A law is not extraterritorial when it covers proposals or decisions about domestic redundancies developed or taken abroad. The United States submission would render largely, largely OTOs the procedures and time for pleading state immunity. State immunity is an adjudicative bar separate from a foreign state's underlying responsibility. The United States case elides two distinct principles. This appeal concerns situations covered by Tulkra but falling outside EU law, so the United States cannot rely on EU law as entitling it to protection from discrimination. Further, EU law does not protect third country nationals from discrimination or therefore non-member states. As to ground three, in the light of the Court of Justice's recent ruling, uh, Talcra goes beyond the requirements of European law in applying to employees of public administrative bodies like Mrs. Nolan. However, until 1995 and the regulations then, it fell short of European law in being confined to circumstances where employees enjoyed recognised union representation. This shortfall was identified in another earlier Court of Justice ruling in 1994. The 1995 regulations were then made 
by the Secretary of State, relying on the powers conferred by Section 2 of the European Communities Act 1972 to make delegated legislation. The um, regulations covered all situations covered by TULCRA as originally passed by Parliament, including therefore dismissal of employees of public administrative establishments, which falls outside the scope of EU law. This leads to the United States' argument that the 1995 regulations were to that extent outside the power conferred by Section 2. The contrary argument is that Section 2, subsection 2, confers not only power not only to implement EU law, but also uh, to make uh, delegated uh, orders in council for the purpose of dealing with matters related to any UK obligation under EU law. As to this, the Supreme Court accepts that Section 2, subsection 2, envisages a close link between the content of any such regulations and the relevant European Union law obligation, but each case must be considered on its merits. Here, Parliament had, by its original enactment of Talcra, established a unified domestic regime drawing no distinction between different parts of Talcra within or outside EU law. In these unusual circumstances, Parliament could be taken to have created for the domestic purposes of Section 2, subsection 2 of the 1972 Act, a relationship which the Secretary of State was entitled to take into account and to continue by and in the 1995 regulations. The submission that the 1995 regulations were ultra vares in protecting employees of public administrative establishments without trade union representation would therefore also be rejected. Lord Carnworth would dismiss the appeal on the first two issues, but allow the appeal on the third issue. <laughs>